Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Big Change webinar, uh, this time entitled The Devils in the Dashboard. Um, it's not a Halloween uh, Halloween webinar, although it might be Halloween themed. We are here to talk to you about uh, the brand new feature that has now been released to absolutely everybody um, and how that can help you understand what your business is really doing. Um, my name is Jonathan. I'm Product Marketing Manager at Big Change, and I'm joined by Alikia. Morning, Alikia. How are you doing? Hi, Jonathan. I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, so before um, Alikia and I um, have a brief chat um, about what dashboards are going to bring, um, a bit of background to those who are not a member of the Big Change family. It's great to see um, some well-known names um, on this call, but also some people who I've, I've not seen before. Um, welcome. Um, you're welcome whether or not you're a customer of ours or not. Um, if you're not a customer of ours, you might be wondering what Big Change do. Big Change provide a job management software platform that makes your business unstoppable. And we do that for a single monthly fee and provide you not just the six features that you can see on screen, but many more um, uh, each month. Our system continues to grow. So we provide a world class mobile application on both iOS and Android. Uh, we provide job scheduling, which is probably the main reason why most people sign up to JobWatch. Uh, live tracking, which integrates to the job scheduling. Um, a CRM platform to bring it all together. Uh, finance, quoting to invoices. And then finally, business intelligence, data and reporting to help your business grow. And that's the main area of what we're going to be talking about today. You don't just have to take our word for it. We have over 2,000 customers across Europe, the Americas, and Asia Pacific. And on screen are some brands that you may recognize. Uh, towards the end of the presentation, we are going to uh, show you some slides which will have some QR codes on. If you scan the QR code, uh, you will be taken to the resource in question. Uh, all of our webinars um, are recorded, including this webinar, and they will be uh, made available on our YouTube channel as soon as possible after this. So if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, head over to youtube.com forward slash big change, hit the subscribe button and the bell, and you will get a new notification before it's posted anywhere else. So we have webinars, we have newsletter content, we have hints, tips and tricks. So this is going to be a bit of a new section um, for our presentations, and we're not actually going to show the functionality in question at the moment. What we are going to do is just have a brief chat as to why dashboards are important to your organization. So this is not big change functionality related. This could be applicable to any type of analytics platform that you have. Uh, and we've got Alikia, the expert here. So Alikia, why are dashboards and analytics important to people on this call? Why should they care about it? I think um, the fundamental value of, uh, you know, of, of dashboards lies within the data itself. So I think for any business owner or uh, an executive or manager, whoever is interested in understanding how the business is performing, um, and if they are interested in improving uh, this, that performance in several areas, it's crucial for them to understand what their data is telling them. And business intelligence dashboards just does that. It provides you data-driven insights, so you're less likely to rely on guesswork and intuition. But you have you're basing your uh, approach or you know uh, optimizations or anything else that you want to do out of those metrics. You're basing them um, on actual facts and figures rather than guesswork. So you're much more likely to have positive outcomes and develop uh, you know, efficient strategies, uh, process improvement strategies, et cetera, based on that. And if customers or prospects on this call don't have dashboards, what type of methods can they use, if any, to get the data that they need to make those decisions? Um, so we have uh, dashboards are uh, have been deployed to all of our customer sites. Uh, we can also provide if, if prospects are interested, we can provide some, uh, you know, test data and we can let them access these dashboards. Um, there is a separate admin area that dashboards needs to be accessed by, which I can show you towards the end of this call if uh, if that's what we're doing or I can show now. If uh, we, we are, we'll, we'll come on to a live demo in a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll come into a live demo in a second. Um, are there any prospects or sectors that can't use our dashboards? 
Uh, no, so any any industry, any sector using field service operations, managing resources, providing such services can use uh, dashboards. Fantastic. OK, um, so we're going to go on to the live section um, of the demo now. If any of you have any questions, um, you will see that I've just put um, a little introduction post in the question section. Um, have any questions, pop them into the chat. I will do my best to answer them whilst we're going through uh, the demonstration that Aliki is about to give. Um, if I can't answer them, um, we will save them to the end and uh, Aliki will uh, no doubt answer them. So I'm now going to hand over the screen sharing to Aliki. Aliki, do you want to go through the dashboards um, and course. how people can start benefiting? Absolutely. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. Can you see yep. my screen? Okay, Johnson. We can do, yes. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, so what I'm showing today is the new analytics and uh, dashboard business intelligence dashboard section. You may notice that uh, you when you move to uh, NL, when you navigate to analytics and reporting tab of uh, Big Change, you may not always see this particular section. You may only notice uh, this part of it. Um, so that means you have not really uh, assigned yourselves BI licenses yet. Um, so I would suggest um, speak to your system administrator to get those BI licenses assigned. I will also show you how to assign those towards the end of this call. Uh, but if you have assigned licenses, uh, then you will uh, see this, this particular section. So every customer is given X number of licenses and we just need to allocate them to, uh, you know, the, the user, the web user who wants to see them. So we have seven dashboards live and there are more standard dashboards coming. Uh, each dashboard tells a story about that particular area. So I'll go through uh, these top level dashboards and then I will uh, dig into specific dashboards to show you what they look like and uh, what metrics they cover. So we have job performance dashboards. So as the name suggests, this is all about your job performance, your success rates, your productivities and stuff like that. Uh, customer services dashboards. So if you're monitoring customer activity, it could be recorded as a type of a note, for example, a complaint um, or, you know, any specific query by the customer and you want to monitor how many queries you're receiving, how quickly you're responding to those queries or complaints, so on and so forth, so you can provide better customer service, then this dashboard is for you. Sales opportunity dashboards, if you're using sales opportunities and you have um, them in different stages, for example, um, you know, you've um, you've you've opened an opportunity, you're now having uh, some conversations with a customer and you feel like, OK, this is going to, uh, you know, this we're going to we're much more likely to win a deal. So your probability is quite high or you don't feel that it's you know you're going to win the deal or your probability is low um you can look how you can have a look at the sales opportunity dashboard which segregates this uh, you know your your data into various stages so you can follow up on the ones that are most uh, interesting interesting to you. So for example, the probabilities that are, um, sorry, the sales opportunities that are of higher probability, those might be the one that you may be interested to pursue. Um, invoices due dashboard. So this dashboard tells you when the money is due. Uh, so you might have sent invoices, several invoices to several customers. And depending on the terms, you may have agreed with those customers, your invoices may be due in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever that period may be. This dashboard is a one-stop shop where it shows you when is my money due and uh, when, you know, which customers is it due from? Um, and again, there's further split and you can see, pin, you know, you can see the exact detail uh, of that specific invoice uh, and you can follow up on, on invoices that are delayed uh, or you can follow up on invoices that are coming up or due to be soon. Quotes, very simple. Uh, similar to invoices. Again, it'll show you your conversion rate. So how many quotes actually have you sent and how many are accepted or rejected? Uh, are you taking way too long to send a quote since its creation or is a customer taking way too long to respond to a quote? So you can measure your life cycle as well so, and identify if there are only bottlenecks within the process. Uh, resource utilization dashboard, this is all about, uh, you know, where your resources are spending their time. Um, and this is uh, the next popular dashboard after job uh, after job performance dashboard. Uh, this is because customers are uh, are interested to, to know are the resources spending more time on the road or on the job um, um, or how, what, what does the absenteeism trend look like? Uh, what job types are consuming a lot of your resource time? So on and so forth. 
Uh, and finally, the uh, the job profitability one. This is again uh, the most popular, most requested dashboard from our customers. Uh, this is for individual jobs only. This helps you analyze what jobs are being profitable, what's not profitable, your profit margin trends, and you can also slice and dice this data by various dimensions. So let's take a look at uh, one of our popular dashboards, uh, job performance dashboard. Um, so what we have here um, is uh, different charts telling the story about your performance. The first chart is your productivity, peaks and troughs of productivity. So some days you've done more jobs, some days you have done less jobs, and there could be a number of reasons for that. And you can actually dig into it if you're interested in that particular data point. OK, it's only eight jobs. Why is that? So you click into that data point and then it shows you exactly those uh, the jobs that were done on, on that day, who's performed those jobs and all granular information about the job. You can also download this information um, in various formats. Uh, so as you can see, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, et cetera. You will notice that um, some of these charts have this downward arrow, uh, while some of them don't have a downward arrow, but they have this little eye kind of icon. So the difference is when whenever there is a downward arrow, that means you can drill into it. Uh, there's furthermore charts or data behind it. But when you have this eye icon, it acts as a parent chart. So what that means is this chart is telling me how many jobs were completed uh, and, and by customer in descending order. But if I'm only interested to know about this particular customer, I can click on that because that's a parent chart. It filters the rest of the chart to respond to that. So all I'm seeing right now is my productivity for it had uh, and the job success rate for the jobs we have done, um, plan time, actual time, and the averages of planned and actual, and uh, number of jobs we have done. Likewise, this one is also a parent chart. So if you're interested in a specific resource, uh, for example, this particular resource, okay, they won't, they've done 12 jobs and you want to know, you know, what jobs, what's their success rate, so on and so forth, you click on that and then Everything that's showing that's been shown here is for that resource. Uh, jobs by location, so where they work, what areas they work, what job types they've completed, and their success rate. Uh, you can also, if you want to know, okay, there's this one job here that's not been completed successfully. What is that job? Click into it, and it'll show you the job exactly. Uh, we're also developing some new functionality, which you will see in uh, in in the next few weeks, where you can actually click on the job itself. So you click on that line, and it will take you back into Job Watch to see to show you that particular job card. So if there's any changes you want to make, or if you want to know more information, you can navigate into that particular job from here. Um, there are also um, extra charts like the, which are shown in times uh, you know as, as hyperlinks um, so this is an average job time per resource so if you're interested to know how long is a, um, a resource on an average taking then you can see that as well again this is a parent chart so if you're interested in any particular resource you click on them and the rest of the dashboard will show data pertaining to that uh, we also have what we call as global filters. So this helps you uh, filter the entirety of the dashboard by category, job type. You can also select a date range. So you may notice that if you've used Job Watch previously, you couldn't go back more than 62 days. Uh, that restriction no longer applies here. So you can go as far back as you want. We recommend not, you know, about two years because you can go back prior to two years if you want, but the data quality may not be that great. So we recommend uh, up to two years. Um, um, is, is is you know you could you could you, you could retrieve data for going back up to two years uh, without any restriction. This does not have any performance impact on the system either. Uh, and there's some more. Um, filters here. The other thing is you can multi select. So you have quite a lot and you can just click on that and multi select the ones that you want. By taking out the ones that you don't want and then apply your filters, uh, which is again another option that we didn't have previously on job watch. OK, uh, I will quickly jump on to the resource one. OK, uh, so we have resource utilization by week. This is week by week data and it's color coded. 
uh, I mean, this is all test data, so take it with a pinch of salt. So ideally, what you would like to notice is a lot of dark blue bars because that's where your resources are spending time on job. Your green uh, bars are where they're spending time uh, driving. Your um, blue, light blue are absence hours, and your gray is the time that is not allocated to any of these activities. So they're not driving, they're not on job, they're not absent. So this is not allocated to uh, uh, anything, any specific activity. So this is coming from jobs at the moment. Uh, Assistants are not shown on this first version, but we have plans to include assistance later on. Uh, but as in a nutshell, you can see, you know, if the trends in your graphs, ideally you'd like to see more of those, like I said, uh, dark blue bars. But if you're interested in a specific week, you can also click on that and it'll show you every single day of a week. And if you're interested in a specific day, then you can drill through further and then it'll show you granular data. So every single resource, when they started, when they ended, uh, if there's any absence that are recorded and if there's any unallocated time. It's test data, as I said, so we have a lot of unallocated time. Um, here, what we have is um, your available hours versus driving, uh, sorry, versus uh, actual hours. So if your, if your uh, green bar is above your blue bar, that means your resources are overworking uh, because, uh, you know, they're using more time than their available hours. Whereas if your green bar is below your blue bar, that means they are underworking or they may have some spare capacity. Uh, now, this is all down to the data. Um, maybe there are gaps in the data. Maybe your resources are working right up to the wire, but you you don't, you know, it's it, the data is not recorded. So this is where it helps us to dig into the data and find out is this right or make, make amendments as required. Um, and the other charts are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, job um, resource allocation by category, by contact, by type, and absenteeism trends, which also follow similar uh, similar um, pattern as the above, as in you have drill, drill throughs all the way through that granularity. Lastly, I will go through profitability for individual jobs. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, interesting data in here. You can see uh, you know, your job value uh, for all your jobs that are financially completed. So this dashboard only shows jobs that are marked as financially completed. Um, so it will show you your job value uh, and your invoiced value. Uh, in this case, there is no invoiced value. So it's showing your total uninvoiced. Uh, so if you have 100, you know, 100 grand worth of job value and you've invoiced 50 and you've not invoiced the other 50, this dashboard will show you that. Uh, also your costs. Um, your margins, uh, your actual margins from lines, sorry, your margins from lines and actual margins uh, by taking invoices into account. Uh, and also what those margins look like when you split it by, uh, you know, costs, for example, what are your most costing job types? Uh, what are your most costing contacts? Uh, most costing resources. Likewise, what are your most profit making job types? That's, we don't have much data in here in the test environment, unfortunately, but you would see similar sort of graphs. So you can uh, visualize data from multiple perspectives. It's not just profit and margins, but it is also giving you the information about, OK, what resource, uh, what contact or what job type is most profitable, least profitable, which one is giving you more revenue, uh, so on and so forth. And um, that's the uh, end of our demo. Is there anything else? Um, we want to cover, Jonathan, uh, do, shall we go through the admin console access bit now or? Yeah, I think I think it's worth just briefly touching on how uh, users can assign licenses. Um, we've got a few questions that come in, so if we cover the assigning licenses and then we can probably go to the questions. Of course. So uh, speak to your administrator if you believe you need to see dashboards and you don't have them yet. Um, only administrator can uh, um, set up these licenses for you. So they will not need to go into web users, add or edit web user, find the web user, uh, click on edit, and there will be a new tab called dashboard. If you go into that dashboard tab, you will see number of licenses remaining. So every customer has been given a uh, few uh, free licenses. So you'll see how many licenses you have. And all you need to do is tick that box and save. That will then give the license to that user. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is uh, dashboards represent all data. So 
uh, we would suggest that when when this access is given, it is given with caution and it is only given to users who are OK to see all data without any restriction. And that's the end of the demo, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Cool. So we've actually had a few quite a few questions come in, Alikia. Um, so the first one wasn't really a question. It was from Andy. Um, he was getting palpitations by viewing the number of tabs that you have open on the screen. Um, it's all go at big change, isn't it? We're very busy. Um, the more tabs, the better. Yeah, it's uh, it, and it's one of those things where I've not really restarted my computers from yesterday. So there's tabs from yes yesterday as well. We don't have any downtime at Big Change. We don't have time to restart our computers. So yeah, that, that's why there's so many tabs, Andy. Um, uh, Jack asked, uh, is the data interactive when you download it or does it download the snapshot you're viewing? Now, I assume it's just the, the data that you download. It's a snapshot. If you want to, to download the data again, you can do that. There's no interactive element on the download that you have. Is that right? That's right. Yes. Cool. Um, a few people have been asking about the single jobs. Um, is there a dashboard coming for group jobs? Yes, there is a, a profitability dashboard coming for group jobs, um, and we're also producing similar sort of uh, uh, dashboard that um, that you know that that uses both single as well as group jobs for work in progress in the future mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but if there are if there are other use cases where we think group jobs version of existing dashboards would be useful, we can certainly take that uh, as as, a, as feedback and look into it. Okay. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, Jade and Sean, they've just uh, they've dropped something in the chat about um, not seeing the number of licenses which they've expected. Um, we'll uh, get in touch with your customer success representatives um, and we'll ask for them to reach out to, to, to get in touch and, and talk through the, the licensing. Um, it's not something that we can really um, do on this particular call. Um, Shelley asked a question, um, is the is uh, is this planned or actual data on the dashboard that's being shown? Um, I think that was the job data uh, where it was timing. Maybe it wasn't this dashboard. Maybe it was the resource timing. Um, it's the actual. It's not planned. It's, it it's is. Um, yeah, it is where your resources have spent their time rather than, you know, their planned job or drive time. OK, so it's retrospective, fantastic. retrospective data for jobs completed. Yeah, cool. I was right in that case. That's always good to hear. Uh, David messaged, uh, will JobWatch allow assistants to record their own travel and start and finish time? Um, at the moment, um, we don't allow that, David, but uh, it's a great idea. Um, and uh, as I mentioned uh, in the chat, I will uh, pass your feedback over to the product manager and uh, ask them to be in touch with you. Um, we also had another question uh, from Agni, I think it's pronounced. Uh, apologies if it's not. Um, we have jobs planned in for the whole financial year. Is there a way to see forecasted resource utilization? Do we have that's that a, as standard? That's a very good question. Yeah, so forecast is something that some, some of our other customers have asked as well. So it is... Um, I wouldn't say it is on our radar just yet, but if if we were to show predictive uh, analytics and and forecasting, then yes, certainly we would we would consider that as a you know our top priority item because it's not it's been requested a number of times by other customers as well. Cool, fantastic, thank you. Uh, Liam got in touch. Uh, he asked, "What's the difference between absence hours and unallocated hours?" So absence hours is when the resource is booked in absence. Um, they, you know, if they you booked a day off for today, that is your absence hours. But if there is time left on the resource based on their eight to five working day pattern, so let's say a resource works eight to five, if there is no absence within that eight to five, there is no drive time, there is no job time, that is recorded as unallocated time. OK, so effectively unallocated time is if a resource is due to work, i.e. they don't have holiday um, and their time is not booked up with travel or a job, that's unallocated right. time. Effectively time not doing anything of, uh, not doing any activity that's in the schedule. 
that Correct. right? That's right. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so we have a few more questions which I've not yet uh, put into the chat, but I'll just read them through anyway. Um, Anish uh, said, uh, on the sales opportunity dashboards, could it be switched from customer to parent contact? Um, we have introduced parent contacts on a number of dashboards, so uh, we must have done it on here as well. Fingers crossed. Let me. We've done it a while ago, so I can't remember exactly. Yes, we do. That, yes, you can uh, filter it by contact group, pairing contact, or contact. Cool, fantastic. Um, let me just make a note of that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the other questions that have come in are: uh, Jade, Jade has asked, uh, within the job profitability dashboard, does this include labor cost and purchase orders? It does include purchase orders. Yes. Labor costs will be included if you've added them as lines. Um, so effectively, what we're doing on that job profitability dashboard is we're pulling all your uh, sales price from your lines, and which is the job value, and all your cost price from your lines. So if you've entered labor as one of the line on the job, then that would show up. In this particular example, as you can see on the legend, there is a blue and a green, but unfortunately in the test data, we didn't have any purchase orders to show. So otherwise you would be seeing um, a green bar um, from, from purchase order costs as well. So yes. Cool, fantastic. Uh, Jenna has asked, can you save a view in the dashboard to save time having to change the filters all the time? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, but this could be something we can probably offer as a as an enhanced functionality when we provide designer licenses. Okay. So at the moment, uh, everything is view only, uh, so you can only see, but not really edit or save uh, your edits. But there there may be an opportunity for for us to do it when we give you the editability access, uh, which is a separate license type. Okay. Cool. Uh, Stacy has asked, uh, where does the data pull from when the job, sorry, where does the data pull from in the job profitability dashboard? When I open our dashboard, all the boxes say no data to display except the actual margin by contacts, top 10. Um, by, the, by the sounds of it, Alika, we probably want to ask customer success to, to get in touch to see that specific case yeah. and, and try and work it out. Exactly. I mean, if if all the charts were saying no data, then that would explain there were probably no um, jobs marked as financially complete because the remit of the dashboard is only to show financially completed jobs. Uh, but if some of the data is showing, some of the data is not showing, I would yeah definitely look into that in, in more detail. Fantastic. Stacey, yeah, Stacey, we'll, we'll reach out to your customer success rep um, and ask for them to give you a call um, to talk that through. Obviously, we, we can't see your specific setup on, on this uh, particular webinar. Um, Anish uh, has been back in touch. He is talking about the charts on the dashboards are grouped by parent contact rather than individual contact. Um, what we might do, Anish, is we again we will ask customer success to to get out, uh, get in touch with you to to work through that particular problem. Um, I, I'm not too sure um, uh, if if we would give you the correct answer, given that we failed already on the first time. It sounds like something we might be able to do, um, but if not, customer success will take the details down and pass them over to Alikia. Um, mm, uh, Stuart has literally just put in a question now going, can timesheet activities be included in the report? Resources could be on a timesheet activity, so not really an allocated time. Yeah, uh, again, another feature for our existing resource utilization dashboard. So yes, a timesheet is something that we de scope from the first version, but we will include it in subsequent versions. OK, cool. Um, Cool. Uh, let's just have a look, see if there's any more questions. Oh my gosh, loads more questions. If labor costs, so this is from Gillian, if labor costs are changed, is profitability worked out based on the cost at the time of the job? I think that's to do with the financially complete settings, isn't it, Alikia? It is as well. And, um, you know, there's obviously this recalculate button on job watch as well, which brings in your latest changes to that. So if you're if you've entered a line on a job and you think the actual cost has changed, 
uh, you, you you know you can use that recalculate option which brings in your uh, your latest changes um, and the dashboard is is real time near real time it's one hour behind job watch data so yeah when you revisit the dashboard for the next time provided you've recalculated the data that should show you up-to-date information okay cool uh let's have a look see what else we have uh dominic has asked oh, where's the question gone keeps disappearing if you're recording job cost as actual cost i.e actual travel time on job time would this show completed jobs with the inflated margins on the dashboard until jobs are completed and financial lines are recalculated uh, I don't have to say that again. Sorry. <laughs> I, I know, it's, it's a bit of a long question, Dominic. We will uh, we will look at that question, um, and uh, we will either be in touch directly, or your customer success manager will be in touch directly on that. Um, it's a great question. Um, we probably want to have a quick look at your setup in order to make sure we give you the the full advice. Yeah, I think one thing that I would suggest on that one is there's there's a lot happening on Job Watch. Um, if if your data is 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 updated on job watch and it's recalculated or manually updated whatever you do on job watch the dashboard will reflect that information um as i said there's one hour lag but you know it it is up to date fantastic cool so we have come to the end of the fantastic questions that you guys have asked so before you disappear don't disappear there's still plenty more to come so where are we? Here we go. For those of you that have not uh, signed up to Big Change, you might be asking, how much does this cost you? Well, the dashboards um, that we have shown today are available as standard. Um, as Aliki mentioned, customers do get licenses um, included uh, of the monthly offering. Uh, if you want more people to access dashboards, um, you can, of course, get more licenses. But we do make dashboards available to people within your organization as part of the monthly offering. Our dashboards have been incredibly well received and you don't just have to take our word for it. They have been featured in some trade press. Uh, this literally came through this morning. So Aliki, you won't have seen this. Um, I will be sending this through to you shortly. Um, so we have been featured in IoT now. Uh, we've also been featured in Telematics Wire. Uh, electrical contracts. Uh, electrical contracting news. I'm trying to work out what that one was. Um, and also uh, industrial news. And finally, customerservicemanager.com. So, uh, yeah, we have quite a few uh, members of the trade press uh, singing the praises and the benefits of uh, dashboards. You really, really should try these out where you can. The dashboards are live. Um, all of our customers have access to them. If you don't have access to them, for whatever strange reason, um, please do get in contact with Road Crew or your customer success manager, and we will look into that. All of our customers should have access to it now. In addition to having access to dashboards, uh, we have the Big Change University. Uh, the Big Change University is something that is included as part of the monthly fee for all of our customers. It includes slides, recordings, and presentation resources. It's a great tool for people who've been using Big Change for months, years, or who have just joined your company. When you have people join your organization, they get access to the university. So Big Change training is on us, not on you. If you're not a member of the university, you can sign up to bcu.bigchange.com forward slash new user, scan the QR code and populate the details. It will ask for a password and that password is BC University 5. So head over to the Big Change University. Uh, yesterday, Alika and I did a more in-depth chat about the benefits that dashboards can bring from a general perspective. Um, it was great fun to record. Um, it's in the process of being edited. And when it's edited, it will be available on YouTube along with the webinar recording uh, and other recordings. The other recordings that are on YouTube are 13 time saving features to turbocharge your business. That one is exceptionally popular. Um, you will almost certainly learn something about the big change system that you don't know already. Um, and it and these tips will save you minutes, if not hours each day. The other webinar that is available on YouTube is how to manage your vehicles like a pro. Uh, 
that one again exceptionally popular uh, for fleet managers um, and, and how you can save a huge amount of money by making sure that you don't miss things like service dates um, or go into a chargeable zone like the lung congestion charge without paying. We have our help site available at help.bigchange.com. Uh, scan the QR code to be taken there. And if you want to view the written articles, uh, you can scan that specific QR code. Uh, last but not least, uh, on the things that I want to cover um, in this particular section, uh, question of the week, the Success Center. This time we're talking about buy now, pay later. Um, as you can see from the question, um, this might be something that we add to our platform. So we've all heard of things like Klarna. Um, and a lot of people are using that um, as a way of uh, increasing the opportunity um, for sales. And this might be something that we look to add to the big change platform, depending on what people's feedback is. So uh, we'd love to hear your voice on this. Uh, if you are a member of the big change family, click on the success center question of the week. And I'd love to take part. It literally takes you two seconds. What is coming up? Uh, we have several events coming up. September, we are in BPEX uh, over in Dublin. We then go to RWM uh, also in September, but that's in Birmingham. And then we do a couple of stints at the Elect Show, uh, one in Coventry and then one later in Exeter. Last two things, the Big Change Community Newsletter is now out. Um, it's got a great selection of videos, articles, um, pretty much everything you might want. And again, we filmed the next month's newsletter yesterday. If you want to read the Big Change newsletter for the month of July, I think it was, June, whichever one the last month was, uh, click on the QR or scan the QR code and you'll be taken to it. Alikia and I um, well, would very much like to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, you can either you can do this in one of two ways. You can either use the reaction um, within the Teams thing um, to send us a love heart, an applaud, a thumbs up, or alternatively, we would really like it if you could spend two minutes, scan the QR code, um, and that will ask you one or two questions. All are optional, um, and we'd love to hear your feedback on it. Um, the more feedback that you guys can give us, um, the better we can make these sessions. If there's a session that you would like to see, again, please do let us know in the feedback and we will endeavor to put it on. Uh, this year, we are going to continue with more sessions. So let us know what you would like to see and we will do our very best to deliver upon that. Um, okay, I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, thank you very much for all the love hearts that you've given us. Um, really appreciate it. Um, okay, Jonathan, Alicia, oh, yeah. sorry, just one thing to add uh, to what Jonathan has said. So following this meeting, if anybody wants to have another detailed demo of uh, the dashboard or if you have you know, specific requirements around your dashboards uh, that the current uh, specific requirements around data or pain points around data uh, that the current dashboards, dashboards are not addressing and you want to have a, uh, a conversation with me, please let your customer success manager know and I'm more than happy to set up a call with you to talk through this in in more detail. Fantastic. Alikia, that's a great, uh, great thing. And please do take her up on that. If you don't know who your success manager is, get in contact with Road Crew. They will be able to tell you uh, Road Crew customer service on 01134571000, I believe the number is, um, or Road Crew at bigchange.com. Um, Thank you very much for joining us. Um, until next time, um, we hope you guys continue to be unstoppable. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye.